there is no situation where fire isn't a solution. If you're the teammate that always burns their way out of everything, this is the build for you. You pyromaniac. Before starting, I designed blueprints of the gear, weapons, skills and talents with all the information you need and uploaded those on Patreon. It's for those who are interested in being able to have a look at the build without re-watching the video again. These are one among many rewards for patrons, so if you're willing to support Mastermind HD monetarily, you can find the specifics on Patreon. Thank you. The core part of any build is the gear. From the chest piece to the holster we want to equip the classified fire crest, resulting in a 6 piece bonus. Over on the right of the screen we can see the bonus specifics, which essentially revolve around increasing the flame turret range damage and weapon damage in general to targets on fire. The two piece, obviously the least interesting, improves the amount of incendiary grenades we have by 100% resulting in a total of 6 incendiary grenades. The three piece is where it starts to get interesting. It increases the range of the flame turret by 50% and the damage by 30%. The four piece increases the weapon damage by 15% against targets that are on fire, which is interesting combined with the weapon talent we'll later use. But it gets better. The five piece is a combination of the two and the three piece. And it increases the incendiary grenade capacity by another one, bringing it to a total of 7 incendiary grenades. As well as the flame turret range, it is increased by 15% and its damage by another 10. Finally, the 6 piece makes things a little bit more complicated in choosing which way you want to go. It brings with it the improved firecrest talent and that brings with it 4 bonuses. 1. It increases the chance of your bullets setting enemies on fire by 2%. The targets we set aflame can cause a fiery explosion when killed by our bullets once in every 10 seconds. If, however, NPCs are set on fire by our turret, they will burn 25% longer for every 2000 electronics, which can be brought up to 125% if you manage to reach 10,000 electronics. And the fourth and final bonus immunizes us from our own fire explosions. Every piece of gear also has main stats, armor, major and minor attributes, as well as slots for prototype and performance mods. The main stats we want to spec into our electronics on every piece, optimize our rolls until they're 1401 to min-max our build of course. The exception here is the holster, which can roll 1401 on every main stat. The armor rolls are different per piece of gear, however, on screen you can see the maximum roll for each gear piece. The major attributes are different per piece of gear as well, but there's a pattern in which ones we'll select for our build. Focusing on increasing the effectiveness of the turret is core, meaning we'll focus on skill power and skill haste, but where we can't get those we'll select health, assault rifle damage and enemy armor damage. The minor attributes we're rolling are damage to elites, up to 12%. Other than that, we want to select Burn Resistance, Disrupt Resistance, Blind Death Resistance, all up to 33%, or Ammo Capacity, where we can roll the others. The prototype mods selected are electronic mods, and there are two ways we can go with this. Some people prefer selecting superior mods. They lower the amount of electronics we can roll to a maximum of 202 instead of 267, which will hurt your skill power, but allows us to roll up to 5 times 4% damage to elites, which increases the effectivity of the turret by more than electronics mods could, which increases the effectivity of the turret by more than the electronic mods could. However, other people like myself want more electronics to increase the skill power with high-end mods. The reason for that is because it allows us to stack electronics up to 10,000, which adds 125 burn duration for NPCs and al allows us to better use one of the weapon talents we'll get into in a minute. Also, if we were interested in PvP with this build, this would be more useful. For those people, we want to equip electronic mods that roll 267, and these should have the skill haste attribute, which rolls up to 3%. The performance mods, of which we are allowed to equip 4, remain the same nonetheless, and all increase the turret damage by 4%. And the weapons are equally as important as the gear. Complement the right one with our gear set and we're bound to be more efficient and more effective. 
the primary weapon selected is the Urban MDR. The exotic assault rifle has a high base damage, increased headshot damage at 95% as opposed to the regular 75% and is in general a great weapon. However, where this weapon shines is in its exotic weapon talent. Distracted, as it's called, increases its weapon damage by 18% when the target is affected by a status effect. And let it just be the case that we're running a build that focuses on constantly putting your enemies under a status effect. We don't have to worry about the requirements, every urban MDR rolls this talent. The other two supplement our weapon and turret effectivity. The second weapon talent is Talented, which increases our skill power by 15% for 20 seconds upon killing a target. The effect does not stack and killing a new target does refresh the timer, but it increases the effectivity of the turret quite a lot. The third and final talent on this weapon is Competent, which increases your weapon damage by 10% for 15 seconds upon using a skill, and that's perfect for a skill build. The secondary weapon is debatable. Some people prefer a submachine gun for closer ranges, but we're going for the lightweight M4, because with its high rate of fire and overall good damage, it's great for closer ranges. Plus, it benefits from the assault rifle damage we already have on the gloves. The first two talents on the lightweight M4 are similar to the last two on the Urban MDR. Talented and competent. Thirdly, selecting determined decreases skill cooldowns by 7.5% upon getting a kill, which is pretty nice for a skill build. The mods are similar for both weapons. The optic of choice is the VX1 scope with its increased headshot damage. The minor attributes on the mod should be critical hit chance and accuracy. In the magazine slot will equip extended magazine naturally. It increases the magazine size by an insane amount. And other than that we're looking for critical hit chance and rate of fire. The underbarrel supports the small grip which we'll use to increase the critical hit damage, accuracy and reload speed. And the final mod, the muzzle, is the Omega Rifle Suppressor. It increases critical hit damage, accuracy and reload speed as well. Those were the two primary weapons essentially. Now for the sidearm of choice, it's completely up to us. I like the Golden Rhino because of its exotic weapon talent. The Golden Rhino talent increases the stagger by 200%. With its high damage and this effect, I can crowd control rushers sometimes, which can be nice from time to time. However, it's up to you which one you want to choose. The other weapon talent I run on this is Expert. Every sidearm has that, increasing the weapon damage by 100% when the target is lower than 30% health, which is nice for finishing people off essentially. Its mods are the Reflex Sight with critical hit chance, critical hit damage and stability, as well as a small laser pointer with accuracy, critical hit damage and reload speed. Still, don't look into this too much, because 99% of the time we won't even use it. Skills are important for any build, but especially for skill power heavy builds like our own. Don't sleep on the talents either, they can make quite a difference. The primary skill is, you guessed it, that hurt with the Dragon Breath mod. Although this mod decreases the range, it increases the damage significantly. Plus the range will get back from the set bonuses. The secondary skills depends on if we're playing solo or not. This build is better in a team that has a dedicated and classified reclaimer medic. If we don't have that, the support station is the solution for us. Due to the high skill power, it performs quite well, although not as great as an optimized classified reclaimer would. will mostly be stationary, increasing its efficiency even more. But for the intended use of the build, we'll go with the Seeker Mine with the Airburst mod. A lethal skill that benefits heavily from a skill power build. The Airburst adds an incendiary effect over a larger area, effectively adding another way to set our enemies alight. The signature skill is simple, the tactical link. A raw damage increase is just what we need in clutch situations like fights with named enemies or other players. Use this wisely because if done correctly you can change the way a fight turns out. That brings us to the talents. Like I said, these can increase the build more than one would think. We're selecting critical save, wildfire, death by proxy and tech support. Critical save decreases incoming damage by 20% for 10 seconds when using a med kit during low health. Wildfire triggers a 30% chance to apply the burn effect to targets within 10 meters if we burn a target. This is perfect for this build. Death by proxy increases our skill power by 20% for 30 seconds when killing a hostile. And the last one, tech support, extends the duration of any skill by 10% if you get a kill while it's active. So you put your turret down, get a kill and it's 10% more duration. 
These are talents that revolve heavily on skill power and in turn increase our efficiency a lot. Gear, weapons, skills and talents make the build complete. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this content. If you made it this far, consider leaving a rating, good or bad. It provides feedback and helps us showing up in the YouTube algorithm. Comment down below with your suggestions on how to build a classified firecrest. How would you build it? Before ending the video, here's a quick reminder for those interested in being able to have a look at the build without rewatching the video every time. I designed blueprints for the weapon, gear, skills and talent. They're available on Patreon, among other rewards for those who are willing to support us monetarily. See it as an extra service. The specifics can be found on Patreon. Other than that, burn some enemies, blaze through them and light up Manhattan as if it's Christmas again. That'll do it. Peace out.